seated. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. Uh, on this festive day, I am Pastor Dave, and we welcome you. You are God's honored guests in our home. Today, our nation celebrates uh, its place as the land of the free and the home of the brave. And in a moment, we will present those colors. It gives us a time and a chance to be proud of the country. You know, the, the Apostle Paul was pretty proud. He, he could claim his place among the greats uh, as well. In Philippians, it tells us, Paul was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a law blameless. But when, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Yeah, Paul was great, but he had this thorn in his side. Kept him humble. Wasn't, wasn't who, you know... He kept asking God, can you take this thorn? Can you take this thorn from me? And God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So too, God's grace for us, even on this holiday, is sufficient for us, no matter where life takes us. Because when we are weak, then we are strong with Christ. We will begin this morning with the presentation of the colors. Please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On this day, we also pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ and to the faith for which it stands, one Savior, eternal with mercy, grace for all. Thank you, gentlemen. We continue and begin our service with the name given to us in our baptism, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore, anyone who thinks that he stands, take heed, lest he fall. No temptation, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be. We do not have a priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then confess this. Most merciful God, we confess to you our pride, arrogance, and boasting. Forgive us for all our sins in our thoughts, words, and works. For the sake of Jesus, who made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death and mercies. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. For Jesus' sake, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all of your sins of thoughts, words, and works. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let's pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Gracious and ever-loving God, we thank and praise you for the freedom we have in you and also the freedom we celebrate today in our nation. As your grace has been sufficient for your people throughout all time, 
grant that it be sufficient for us as well. For your power is made perfect in our weakness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 119. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me. For I trust in your word, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For my hope is in your just decrees. I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame. For I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. I will lift up my hands toward your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statues. Today we welcome Eugene Gillian Jr. as our lector. Eugene. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and tend your flocks, Foreigners shall be plowmen and vine dressers, but you shall be called the priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. They shall eat the wealth of the nations, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion, and they shall have everlasting joy. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from 2 Corinthians. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to the visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up in the paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool. For I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. But for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. A dispute also arose among the disciples as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The king of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table, or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you as my Father assigned to me a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judged the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Mrs. Ross will bring us a good word today for the children. And at this time, I'd like to invite all the children to come forward for a children's message. If you could come sit and face me, because we got the camera on. We don't want to worry about your shining faces becoming superstars too quickly. Sit and face me. Yes, wonderful. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Are you enjoying your summer? Yeah. Oh, it's been a beautiful summer so far. I've been so glad to be in Virginia. It's hot here, but that's all right. It's so warm. It is so warm. Yes. So, happy 4th of July. This is very exciting. I'm very excited to be here. This is my very first 4th of July children's message of all time, so I'm excited to be here. I want to know, what are some things that you do on the 4th of July with your family? Yes, Avery. Um, my, my, Mr. DJ, he gives... I get a firework and I wave around. Ooh, and like sparklers. And then I made a, and then I made, and made the Bethlehem. Oh, sword. cool. Oh, that's awesome. Wonderful. Yes, Stacy. Celebrate our independence. Celebrate your independence. Yes, girl. Yes, sir. We usually play with um, sparkler fountains and sparklers. Yeah, more fireworks. We love fireworks. Yes, Grayson. We go to our neighbor. Mm -hmm. and watch the fireworks. Oh, that's wonderful. So you spend some time with some people in your neighborhoods, and I hear a lot of talk of fireworks. Do you like fireworks? Yeah. I love fireworks. They're so cool. The big ones, yeah, the big ones that they shoot off in the cities. Oh, my goodness. When I was a little girl... When we were at the baseball place... They shoot off fireworks? We saw big fireworks. Yeah, me too. So I used to go to my grandma and grandpa's house, and my grandma and grandpa, they lived on this big hill. They lived on a big hill in Rochester, Minnesota. And their driveway, it, was, it overlooked the whole city. From their driveway, you could see the entire city. So on the 4th of July, us and all of their neighbors would come and sit on their driveway. And we could see the fireworks like right in front of us. It was the coolest thing like ever. The big fireworks. The big fireworks. Fireworks are so cool. Okay, put your hands down. We'll chat later. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're just going to be here for a long time if we... Um, <laughs> so fireworks are so cool. You know, the thing about fireworks is they're kind of loud sometimes, but they're so bright. I think that if we were in a city and you turned off all the lights, and you just shot off fireworks, you would still be able to see that they light up the night sky. And there's so many different fun colors, this awesome bright light. We have little ones. Yeah, you have little ones. And these fireworks make 
I'm going to read you something from the Bible. Oh, well, and I was going to bring a firework up here because usually I bring something, but Pastor Dave said no. I'm kidding. <laughs> Says yeah, whatever. So you can be upset about that with him. One second, sit down, sit down. So speaking of great light, like a firework gives off, Jesus tells us in the book of John, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So fireworks, they could light up the city pretty well, but I don't think they can light up the whole world at one time. Do you think that? No, they're not quite big enough. You know who can light up the whole world at one time? Is God, yes, Jesus is like the biggest, brightest firework of all time. He is so bright because he has so much love inside of him. And he goes on later in the Bible and he says, hey, you know how I'm the light of the world? Well, I died for you, and I sent my spirit to live in you, so guess what? You are now the light of the world. So you get to be a bright light that's bright enough to shine over the entire world. How do you do that? You love people, you be nice to them, you show them the light of Jesus, you tell them about Jesus. That's how you can be as bright as a firework, this 4th of July and every other day. Will you please fold your hand and pray with me? Repeat after me. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, you are so good. Thank you for being the brightest light and putting your light in us. Help us to shine bright. Thank you also for the freedom you give. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. You may go back to your seat. And you may all remain seated as we sing our next hymn.
should you choose to accept is to represent Jesus Christ. You will be sent to places you have never been before. You will meet people who reject the Savior as the Heavenly Father sent Jesus to bring you back to God. So you will be sent by Jesus to bring people to his love. Pastor Dave will brief you with further details. This message will self-destruct in 15 minutes. <laughs> Well, if you had recognized the attempt without plagiarizing something, <laughs> it's the old TV commercial or the old TV show, uh, Mission Impossible, where you may have seen it in the movies, and they have the, you know, the fuse leading, should you accept this mission? So it's an opening spoof to the topic that I'd like to focus on today. Uh, the gospel text um, I'm pulling from is the gospel text that's in our lectionary. It comes from Mark 6, um, beginning with the first verse, not our gospel reading of today. It's the one in a series where we've been following through the book of Mark uh, over the Sundays, and we will continue that next Sunday. So if you'd like to follow along, um, I'll be reading from Mark 6, uh, beginning at the seventh verse. Now the first six verses of Mark 6, which is a part of the scheduled um, um, gospel reading, is where Jesus decides to go home uh, to Nazareth and says, uh, let, me, let me tell you the good news. And uh, while people were astonished and amazed at his many good works, um, they didn't believe and he had to leave um, because of lack of faith and he moved on. And as they exited Nazareth, we pick up now Mark 6, verse 7. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. We open in prayer. Father, help us now as we meditate on your words. Speak to each of us through your Holy Spirit that we might understand, believe, and live in the light of your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, now if we had been following the apostles uh, on their journey with Christ at this point, and we were doing it in a movie script, I think it would be fair to say that they have been extras. They have been uh, not the primary actor. They've been observers of Jesus' mission. They have been bystanders to the teaching and all his miraculous deeds. To this point, they have been essential partners in the mission. Uh, but all of this is about to change. He sends them out two by two. Why two by two? Well, Jesus knew they would face danger on their own, and companionship is good. Jesus would have also been familiar with Ecclesiastes, uh, the fourth chapter, that two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one stumbles, another one can help them up and so forth. And Jesus would have been familiar with the practice of Judaism, whereby no word could be confirmed except on the strength of two witnesses. So it makes perfect sense for these reasons, and probably more besides them, to go out two by two. Jesus was sending the apostles on a mission trip out to spread the news about him in Galilee. Just as he does today, sending each of us out as his representatives to our neighborhoods. I liked in the children's mercies, shining our light, being bright. He sends us out. We can think of our Christian life like being on a mission or a trip. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. But it's interesting, it makes me think of a, a 
a question first. If you were going on a trip for Jesus, what would you take in your suitcase? What would you pack? Bible. Bible. What else? Cross. Cross. What else? Nobody's, nobody's taking their, their I was going to say Nintendo, but I'm probably dating myself. <laughs> hymnal? Maybe hymnal? Okay. Pardon me? <laughs> what was it? Cell phone. cell phone? Yeah, cell phone? You betcha. Don't go anywhere without my cell phone. Maybe clothes? Yeah. We, we'll pack a lot of things. Now, we want to be careful uh, not to treat the Bible in a very wooden fashion. Um, but I think in our reading today, there are three themes that can apply to our mission to connect people with Jesus. And we're going to take a look at those three themes. The first one is simplicity. And when we looked at verses 8 and 9, if, uh, if we were following Jesus' instructions to the disciples 2,000 years ago, uh, we wouldn't take a big suitcase. We wouldn't take a good-sized duffel bag. We wouldn't even take a clothes bag. We'd just take the clothes off our backs. Plus a walking staff. He tells them, keep it simple. Simplicity. Keep it simple. The mission the disciples are about to embark upon the mission that each of us is on is of such significance they don't need to get cluttered up with, with a bunch of stuff. The absence of clutter makes for mobility and flexibility. The presence of clutter reduces our ability to move quickly and freely. When Marjorie and I were called by God to serve in Seattle, both for a job and at Trinity Lutheran Church, we were in a place where we could be mobile and flexible. We didn't have a big mortgage. We didn't have lots of debts. We didn't have lots of things that would prevent us from saying no to the call. Yeah, maybe the 400 square foot apartment might have been a, a hesitant, but uh, um, it gave us the opportunity to go where God calls us to serve. The absence of bread, the absence of the beggar's bag, the money, and the extra tunic which was used for sleeping at night, uh, would also make it clear to the apostles that their dependence was upon God, their heavenly Father. Now I'm sure some of them wanted to go home and grab some traveling gear, take some things along for creature comforts. No, their commitment to simplicity would not only demonstrate their dependence and trust upon their heavenly Father, but it would also encourage others to become dependent and trust upon God. Now, throughout the years, uh, some of you older folks like me will remember the 60s where people have tried to, to really carry this too far. They would uh, go around wearing white robes, sandals, saying, we're doing what Jesus told us to do. No, you're not. You're just wearing sandals and funny clothes. <laughs> we must be careful that what we, that what is described, we... We don't just simply make that prescribe. This is not a call to asceticism on the part of Jesus. He's trying to make a very simple point to his disciples. Loyalty to the kingdom of God cuts the umbilical cord with dependence upon material things. And today, so many of us are surrounded by material clutter that it's virtually impossible for us should Jesus call us to go or even take time to share the love of Jesus. Martin Luther said that faith, first of all, is depending on God to come through with his promises. When we travel through life with faith, we are turning complete control over to God. We serve to the best of our ability, but the Holy Spirit is making all the real travel arrangements. We travel in faith. Our first theme was simplicity. Keep it simple. The second he touches on is, should have been pushing my buttons, verse 10, hospitality. In the culture of Jesus' time, hospitality was guaranteed to traveling teachers and preachers. And as a result, and that in our sinful nature, it was open to abuse by people overstaying their welcome, or by people bouncing from place to place and so forth. 
Jesus recognized all that could go wrong, but gives some really straightforward, practical advice to them. The apostles must be careful to behave in a way that does not undermine the message. In these most practical of contexts, they should conduct themselves in a way that protects their witness, is how it's often said. Jesus is reminding them that they can go on a mission, not on a vacation. Although you can turn your vacation into a mission. Let me give you an example. You find yourself in a one-bedroom condo as a result of an invitation from Mrs. Levy in the marketplace. And you discover that Mrs. Bartholomew has a four-bedroom ranch with a pool in the back. You're not supposed to leave Mrs. Levy for Mrs. Bartholomew. It won't look good. It won't be good. It isn't right. You create the impression that what you're doing is actually looking to enrich your own life and your own experience, thereby people will lose a measure of credibility when you begin to talk about the nature of the kingdom. And they say, well, it's really about that, giving it all up and following Jesus in this way. How come you moved from Mrs. Levy to Mrs. Bartholomew's house? A pastor once told me that a good sermon will step on toes, but not scruff the shoes. And over the last few weeks, the theme of hospitality has left scuff marks on my shoes. When I sit back and I evaluate my actions in the light of God's word, it gives me pause. And while I know God in his infinite love forgives me when I, re in, when I repent, I still must ask myself the hard question. Do my material goods, actions, or words distract or inhibit the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. I found a few scuff marks in my shoes. First thing, simplicity. The second was hospitality. And now Jesus prepares the, the apostles for the inevitable. Rejection. And as he's covering rejection, I can just imagine the disciples interjecting, you mean like the way that Nazareth didn't welcome you? And Jesus saying, Yes, that's exactly what I have in mind. The reality of the world is, for many people, other parts of life are more important. Family, work, sports, the boat, the cabin at the lake, and so on. Of course, all these are blessings from God. But when blessing is more important than their lives than God, uh, people may not welcome the messenger who says that God needs to be number one. Just like today, Jesus prepares them for the fact that there will be places, there will be times where the people you encounter will neither want to hear you nor want to help. I found it a little comforting, I think, that Jesus went home to Nazareth and uh, he didn't have a lot of success. Um, there are places. The approach of the apostles were to be of gentle persuasion and not that of forceful intrusion. Jesus is very clear with the disciples. When the people are reacting this way, you shouldn't stay around flogging a dead horse. Just move on. And as you move on, shake the dust off your feet. Now the rabbis, when they left Gentile territory, shook the dust from their sandals in an expression of the fact that they were leaving behind the heathen and they were returning to the people of God. They didn't want any of the defilement to follow them. Jesus guides us in a prophetic act to take our sandals, shake the dust off them so that they, when they see us do, going, doing that, it will be a testimony against them that they will look at that and they will say, these people who came in such simplicity, declaring this truth with such authority, who responded to the hospitality of the people confronted by our animosity, they were dead serious about this. And of course they were. And of course, we are today. Today, our meditation focused really on three themes that each of us can evaluate in our own mission plan. Simplicity. Keep it simple. Be ready to move at God's call. Hospitality. Am I doing anything that inhibits God's word? If I do nothing, I'm probably not getting in God's way. That's my personal mission. Don't get in the way of God. And when rejection happens, it's okay. In simplicity and hospitality, move on and continue to share your light. The good news, 
when we fall short, when we fall short, which we often do, we remember how God's Son trades imperfection for his holiness on the cross. We receive his forgiveness and promise of never-ending life as a free gift. More than that, this love of God, which makes our life worth living, is a gift we can share with others so that they know their lives also are worth living. Again, it's in the children's message. The light shines. We have no other message except the message that Jesus has given us to proclaim. To convey who Jesus is, why he came, and what he did. We share the love, forgiveness, and peace of Jesus on a daily mission to connect people with Jesus. That is why we are sent. That's why we are here. We close in prayer. Father, we... We thank you that we have a Bible to which we can turn, that we can go away and investigate and ponder what we heard, and that we can ask the question, what does that mean in our life, and what can I change today to be a better servant of you? Forgive us for our complacency, for our lack of mobility, for our inflexibility. Forgive us for getting so angered that it becomes very hard for many of us to change, to be open to what your Holy Spirit may offer. Cut us free, Lord, we pray, from the things that bind us to time, in order that we might be urgent and outgoing, kind in our sharing, careful in our behaving, so that unbelieving people might become the committed followers of Jesus Christ. We urge you to abide and help us this day and every day. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. We have the opportunity to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together we say our mission statement. Our God-given mission is to connect people with Jesus. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and most holy God, we thank and praise you for all you provide us freely by your grace. We are especially thankful for the freedoms we enjoy and celebrate today as we gather to worship you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of our nation, state, and community, especially our president, vice president, and governor. We acknowledge that you have placed them in these positions to govern us and all people of this land. Grant them wisdom and lead them to make decisions that are in line with your will for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amid the thorns of this life, we lean on your grace, knowing that it is sufficient for us, and in our weaknesses, your strength shines through. We ask for your grace and healing for those who grieve. We ask for your grace and healing for those struggling in body, mind, and spirit. And we lift up and say aloud the names of all 
for whom we have been in prayer for in our personal lives, calling out boldly to you, Marjorie, John, Fran, Jennifer, Michael, David. Lord, in your mercy, we live in a nation and in communities where we are thankful to have brothers and sisters in Christ. Yet there are also many who have either disconnected from you in your church or have never known you. Lead us to share your grace with others. Guide our conversations and grow our relationships with those who do not share the hope we have. Lord, in your mercy. No matter where life takes us, we know we are in your hands, Lord. So we confidently come before you as your children and place these prayers and all concerns into your gracious and loving hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We bring back, now that we are in the month of July, the offering. We thank you, all of you who have continued uh, over the months. Um, encourage you if uh, electronically is more convenient, you with electronics uh, and so forth. Um, but we bring this back and present our gifts to the Lord. people there tied up and worried and burdened with care he said seek first the kingdom and you will see the things that will last for eternity kingdoms fall. So put your trust in the Lord of all. Won't you lay up your treasures in heaven? For people lay up your treasures in glory. Where one day we start, you take them away. Oh, listen, people, in the last to sing. Come and lay up your treasures in heaven. For people lay up your treasures in glory. good this morning. <laughs> please, please rise for our offering.
the communion assistants come to the front and wash their hands, we welcome you to the Holy Communion today. We come to the table believing that Christ's body and blood is in and under the bread and the wine. We believe this not because the Lutheran Church says so, but because Christ tells us in his own testament, this is my body, this is my blood. And why does he do that? He does that for the forgiveness of our sins. As a baptized believer, if this is something that you believe, we walk you to communion today. Communion today, if I said something you haven't understood, please let me know. I'd love to spend some more time talking with you about it. This will be the last Sunday that we do continuous uh, communion. Uh, next week we will be moving back uh, to the railing. But we thought today, because of the large number of people, we would, be doing conti we would do continuous. Ushers will guide you to the center. You'll come down the middle. If you are participating in communion, just please have your hands out. I will place the bread and the wine in there. And then you'll come out to either side uh, for the wine. Is there anybody here who needs a gluten-free wafer? Okay. Don't forget to remind me, just in case I forget. The wine will have two options, our normal wine, if for medical reasons or any other reason you need non-alcoholic wine. That's in the center of the tray, it's the white wine that's there. Um, please let the, the, the worship assistant know. I think we're ready. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and gave and grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the lord be with you always Thank you. 
Please rise. And now may this true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. We continue with the post-communion canon. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your have again fed and nourished us on our way through this world to the one to come. Guide us in living out your grace until that day when we experience it in all its fullness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated just for a couple of quick announcements. We uh, thank you for coming out this July 4th festive. Hopefully uh, you'll be joining us for the uh, picnic um, after the church service. Um, <coughs> Lots of big, lots of hands have gone into pulling that together. So thank you to all of those folks. Uh, thank you for the scouts who helped uh, um, do our colors today. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, the church office uh, will be closed tomorrow, uh, July 5th. And uh, enjoy the day off for those of you who have the day off. That's it. It will be good. I think that's it. Am I missing any announcements? I don't see anybody saying, no, no. Um, that, that. Lori. There's an altar guild meeting right after this service. Ah, so real quick. Real quick. As, quick as an auxiliary member of that with my wife, I should know that. There's an altar guild meeting after church. Please rise for our closing hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing.